as we were worshiping, I was just sitting over there and just thinking of how many times God made a way in my life. How many times it looked like I was about to be wiped out and God came through and rescued me. How many times it looked like my marriage was going to end and God came through and he healed my heart. How many times I was depressed and down and every time God came through and reminded me that I had a purpose and that I had a plan. Some of us need to get a revelation of how God has brought us through so many areas in our life. I think sometimes we get comfortable in our walk with God. I'm just going to go and head to church today. It's just what I do. No, no, no. You're coming to the presence of the Holy King, the Lord of the Lord, the one that saved you, the one that rescued you. Oh, God, we worship your holy, holy, holy name. God, we don't take this time lightly. We get to step into your presence, and we're so excited about just sitting before you and learning and receiving from you, God. We won't casually come into your presence. Instead, we're coming in with expectation. You are going to do something so great in this place, and we are so excited to see what you're going to do. I pray for the hearts of those that are, are listening to me right now, God. I pray that their hearts are just surrendered to you. No more lukewarm hearts in this place in the name of Jesus. We will be a church that's on fire for God. We will be a church that does not look to the right or to the left, but straight ahead to the word of God. We will be a church that does not compare themselves to the world. We'll be a church that stays on the path. I pray that you just speak through me, Lord. It's, it's all of you and none of me. I'm just a vessel. Whatever you want me to say, I'll say it. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. This is your stage, Lord. Just use me in however way you want me to. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You guys may be seated. Oh. Man, I love God's presence. If y'all weren't here, I'd just be laid out up here. Just me and Jesus. Like, I'm good. I just... I love his presence. It's just so good. I want to welcome you guys to the Gathering Oasis. My name is Heather Lindsay, and I am the first lady and only lady that this church will ever have. Amen. Amen. Can I get an amen? There'll be no scandals in this church in the name of Jesus. Amen. Um, <laughs> but my awesome husband just finished preaching in Charlotte, North Carolina. We just launched our third location. Man, God is so good. I mean, just to see how far he's brought our church, it's just, it's mind-blowing. And we're just so excited for Charlotte and, um, and for what the Lord is doing. It's, it's a very, very exciting time. Um, the series for this month is called All In. Are you all in? Are you committed to anything? Can I, can I challenge you this morning? Are you all in to anything? Or do you have one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom and you're expecting to be blessed in the middle somewhere along the way? So today we're going to really jump into urgent care, and that's the title of my message today, urgent care, urgent care. Um, as I'm teaching, I want to explain two things really quickly. So the urgent care is a place, you guys know what urgent care is, right? It's a place where you go when you're sick. You're not quite dying, but you, you know, you just, something's wrong with me. I just need some help. I need to figure out what is going on. And then I want to talk about a spiritual urgent care, and that is when we finally get sick and tired of doing whatever we do in the world, and we come to a place to see the great physician, and he heals us and gives us diagnosis, and he directs us. So I want to start out with the story about um, my son, Roman, and thank you. We're good. Thank you. Um, I want to start with a story about Roman. It's funny because my husband told me, he said, Heather, I need you to finish your message, this, this service. I was like, wait, I'm looking to see who you came for because I didn't, did you come for me? I did not send, send for you, but... <laughs> The last time I preached, we ended a little early, but that was the Holy Spirit. And that's what I told him. I was like, don't, don't say, I'm going to finish today, baby. I'm going to finish. Um, but our son, Roman, had the flu. The crazy thing is my whole entire family got wiped out with the flu for pretty much the past eight or nine days. So it was, everybody's pretty much better now, thank God. Um, but it was a very testing, testing week. And I always like to be honest with y'all because I think sometimes people think because you got a microphone means like, oh, your life is perfect. And you take cute pictures. On Instagram, everything's great. No, we get tested on a regular basis. And this is one area that we, I really got tested in because I'm the only one that managed not to get the flu. Everybody got it but me. And I'm thinking, like, somebody going to go vegan. Somebody else in this house can go vegan. <laughs> can I get an amen from two people? Three, four, five? <laughs> um, 
But speaking of which, we're on a fast. Who's doing the no sweets fast? Woo! Woo! Is it going good? Amen. Amen. If you're not on the fast, it starts now. Amen. Um, <laughs> but back to Roman. So he got sick, man. And it got to the point where I'm like, you know, monitoring it, monitoring it. And he's only six months. And so it's hard because when you see your baby who's sick, and if we could set the clock up there so I can know how much time I have and just honor that, that'd be great. Um, it's just hard because he's six months old, just about six months. And you don't want to see your baby go through anything like that. And so it got to the point where I said, we need to go to urgent care, but I'm not going to go to, I'm going to go to our pediatrician urgent care. So I called and made an appointment. They said, come right now, like come right away. So I was like, great. I go in there and um, as soon as they saw Roman, they said, we need to get um, a nebulizer with albuterol right away to help with his breathing. And so it looks kind of like this. So immediately they came and they put this on his mouth, just like this. And the way that Roman screamed, he screamed his little heart out. And it's the hardest thing as a mother to watch my son scream. It was so hard to watch him just go through being stuffed up, throwing up, not feeling well, and just being miserable. And it was so hard to watch. So as they turned the abuterol, I put it up to his nose, and he looked so surprised. He's like, what is this thing? And then I put it on him, and it's foreign, and it's new to him, so he didn't know what it was. And I put it on, and as soon as it got on, he looked and screamed. And he screamed, and he screamed, and he screamed. But as he screamed louder, I pushed harder. I continued to push harder and harder because I said, I know you don't understand why I'm doing this now, but soon, Roman, you will understand why I'm doing this. Soon you will understand you'll be able to breathe a lot better. And yes, it's hard. And I, yes, I know you don't understand. But as your mother, I know what's best for you, Roman. Will you trust me as I put the pressure on this area? You're not in pain. You're fine. It's just uncomfortable. And I believe that some of us need to go to spiritual urgent care ourselves, because some of us are getting some pressure on our life from our disobedience. Pressure from disobedience in our life. Are you all in? Are you committed to God? Are you committed to him? Or for Roman, it was a nebulizer that put pressure on him that took him on the journey to healing. But for you, has God shut every single door in your life to show you that, you know what, all you really need is him. Are you constantly seeking for relationships and worth and value and all the wrong things? And is he saying, you've hit rock bottom. Now let me give, give you a diagnosis and I can heal you and I can make you whole. You may have lost your job. Something happened in your life that made you kind of hit rock bottom. And then you've gone to the father and he's saying, let me finally heal your heart. You're sick spiritually. Let me heal you. It could be your marriage. And sometimes when we get hit with tests and trials in our marriage, we think it's everybody else. But he, have you ever, and this is what God does, whenever I go and complain or vent about my husband, God always checks my own heart. Quick to change me. Because I can't change my husband. I only can change what I'm doing. I only can work on me. I believe that we come face to face with certain moments in our life where we feel like we've hit rock bottom and God has to pick us back up again and take us on in diagnosis, pick us up and, and, and give us our nebulizer, our uncomfortable place. Maybe you've moved here from another place and you're uncomfortable. And you're kicking and screaming. If you would have saw the way Roman was kicking and screaming, he thought that fighting me meant I was going to stop using the nebulizer. But that is not the case. Just because you fight from, against God and you run doesn't mean that God isn't going to stop putting the pressure on you. He does that for a purpose and for a reason. It's for healing. He does that to show you that all you really need is him. Every door is closed over your life so you can finally realize that your hope must be in the Lord and not in what you can touch and see. It's funny because I'm not even supposed to be preaching <laughs> right now. So what happened earlier this week is I'm sitting there with my husband and I was just scrolling on social media and I saw this amazing flyer. Whoever made it, you did a great job. Thank you. And you picked a cute photo of me. Thank you. Because sometimes people be posting crazy photos. I'd be like, I look crazy on the flyer. Can I get approval process or something? I was like, oh, this is fire. This is cute. Only air. I'm not supposed to be preaching. Michael, Pastor Michael was actually supposed to be the one that was supposed to be preaching. 
And so I saw that and I showed my husband. And I was like, baby, now you know for the past nine days I've been taking care of, you know, everybody, the house at night, up with the sick kids, stuff like that. Like I'm, I, I could use a little break, you know what I mean? I could probably use like a spa date, not so much preaching, but more like spa date. You know what I'm saying? I could use a little bit of time. And you're about to go to Charlotte. You know what I mean? I thank God for our village, but I'm like, you're about to leave and go to Charlotte overnight. You know, and be with the kid at night. You know, I could use a little break. I can sit in the back and Michael can just preach and I'll be with Roman and everything will be great. And he said to me, he was like, well, you know, babe, it's up to you. I don't care. It's, it's, it's your call. So I was like, okay, whatever. I'll just preach. It's already out there. Fine. Then I posted it online. And then Michael and Amanda texted me and said, hey, I thought Michael was preaching. And I was like, you know what? You can have it. I was like, you can preach? <laughs> we good. I'm about Saturday night. I ain't got to study. I can watch HGTV. I can catch up. Shoot, I don't have to preach? Good. I ain't got to preach. Michael, it's all you, bruh. So I texted him back and I said, all yours, bro. Rock out. It's going to be amazing. I know the go downtown is tonight. You're going to do awesome. Rock out. So I'm sitting there with mama. We're watching Cash, Cab, Taxi, Cab, that little show. All of a sudden, I feel the Holy Spirit come over me. I almost start speaking in tongues. But I had to stop it and start whistling. And <laughs> I was like, what is overcoming me? And then I felt grief, wave, like a wave over me, like grief, like disobedience, grief. And then I was like, Lord, what is that? There's no, this is not a bad show. It's just taxi cab. It's like a game show. So I'm like judging my heart. I'm like, have I sinned against you, Lord? So I'm sitting there and the Lord said, you didn't even ask me if I wanted you to preach or not tomorrow. And I heard the scripture, acknowledge me in all your ways and I will direct your path. You didn't even ask me. You assumed because you had a rough week that you didn't have to preach. And I said that, well, that wasn't my intention, Lord. There was just a mix up. There's a mix up. He was like, but I want you to preach. You didn't even ask me. And there's one person that I want you to reach. And they're coming to the services, whether it's here or whether they'll watch it later on. Will you be obedient for the one person, Heather? I think sometimes in our life, if, it doesn't, if we're having a rough week and things aren't looking right, then our commitment changes. It's harder. I'm sorry, I can't show up. I can't show up to the worship team because I had a rough week. I'm sorry, my child is sick. I had a rough week. I can't do it. We begin to practice disobedience over and over again in our life, and we expect for God to give us stages. We expect for God to give us blessings. We expect for God to open up the windows of heaven. God, send somebody else to do, to do it. And that's what I did yesterday. I said, send Michael, I'm good. I can take me a little break. I could use a little spa day. Jesus, can I just get to the spa? <laughs> and as soon as the Lord convicted me, I realized I didn't even ask you, Lord. I just assumed that somebody else could just come up. And I'm sure it would be great and be powerful. But is it the person that God sent? And I wonder, has God had to send somebody else to replace the place where you were supposed to be? How many times does God have to replace the spot that you were supposed to have because you decided to be in disobedience? How many times have you, with your mouth, said, yes, I'm going to do this, but with your action showed something completely different? Are you being faithful with small? Are you saying yes to Jesus when it's hard? Are you saying yes to Lord when, the Lord when everything is falling apart and where you don't understand what he's doing? Or are you going with how you feel this week and wonder why you're not committed to God? I don't feel God. I don't, I don't feel like he's far from me. It's because you've not been obedient to the last thing that he's told you to do. The grief that I felt, I never want to feel that again. And I sat there and I said, Lord, I, will, I text him immediately. I said, I, 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 I'm going I'm to go ahead and preach because I fear God. And one day I'm going to stand before God and be accountable for every word that I said and every thing that I did. And I don't want to stand before him and say, why did you not preach and why did you not do what I told you to do? And because somebody else's life depended on it. I was going to use you to, to, to minister to that one and they would give their life to me and then they would minister to others. But you were in your feelings and in your emotions because the enemy came around and attacked you. So now nations are affected by your one disobedience. The one matters. Do you care about the one or is it all about you? Have you been obedient to the last thing that God told you to do? If you feel led, you feel led to join this church and be a part of it, but you still have not gone through growth track. You still don't, 
You don't know what your gifts and talents are. You, you don't want to serve, but you, you just want to come and just receive. I'm going to go ahead and leave. I've been hurt by church. Let me tell you this. I've been hurt by church too. What if I said I can't stand on a stage and preach because I, I have church hurt? No. I recognize this, that Jesus died for my sins, not the people in the church. So I'm going to serve Jesus with my whole heart and understand that people are broken and they come to the hospital called church and they get healed, but nobody's perfect. You can't charge everybody else for one person's hurt. You can't stand before God one day and say, I'm sorry, God, I didn't serve where you told me to serve because I was hurt by somebody. He's like, well, I healed you. And then you wasted 30, 40 years of your life dwelling on the fact that that person still hurts you. Are you being faithful to God where, where, he, where he sent you? Are you being committed to God? Are you faithful to him when you don't feel like it? If you knew how many times I had to push past my feelings, do what God is telling me to do on a regular basis. I like Matthew eleven twenty eight and 30. Pull that up. And Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for let me learn, of, let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. If some of you feel weary, you're just tired, do you know that you have a promise right there? You have a solution right there. He says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So come on in here and get diagnosed and let me show you what is going on in your life. There's power when you come before the Lord and you sit in his presence. There's power when you come to him and you say, Lord, teach me. I wonder every time I skip my quiet time and my time with the Lord where I'm being intentional, he always gives me a word. And I always wonder about the word I didn't get for the time I did not spend. Most of us, we constantly are going, let me go get a word here. Let me go get a word there. No, no. You, you, you know, you have a whole word right here, but you got to open it up for yourself and read it and spend time with God. Some of us want, we just give me a tweet. Just tweet me the answer, Heather. Tweet me the answer. You have the Holy Spirit who's sitting right here that wants to lead you and guide you and show you the truth. Let's go to Job. I love Job. Job is a beast. Don't want his life. Don't want his testimony. <laughs> I'm good. Very, very good. But his story is, is just so powerful. And, it, and I was studying it. The Lord took me there. As I was, st I was studying it, I'm like, man, this is good. I got to share it. Because um, it just points out a few things. Job 2 and 1. One day the members of the heavenly court came again to present themselves to the Lord. And the accuser Satan came with them. Where have you come from, the Lord asked Satan. Satan answered the Lord, I've been patrolling the earth, watching everything that's going on. Isn't that interesting? Sometimes we forget there's actually an enemy that's patrolling this earth, that's looking at you, that's looking to accuse you, looking to destroy you, and looking to ruin you. If we know this, then let's make sure in our own lives that we're storing up the word in our hearts so we won't sin against God. Verse 3, then the Lord asked Satan, have you noticed my servant Job? He's the finest man in all the earth. He's blameless and a man of complete integrity. He fears God and stays away from evil. And he has maintained his integrity, even though you urge me to harm him without cause. Verse 4, Satan replied to the Lord, skin for skin. A man will give up everything he has to save his life. But reach out and take away his health, and then he will surely curse your face. Verse 6, all right, do with him as you please, the Lord said to Satan, but spare his life. So Satan left the Lord's presence, and he stuck Job with terrible boils from head to foot. Verse 8, Job scraped his skin with a broken piece of pottery barn as he sat amongst the ashes. His wife said to him, are you still trying to maintain your integrity? Curse God and die. That's a word right there. Who you got around you? Who's speaking into you when you're going through something? The last thing you need is somebody talking about curse God and die. Verse 10, but you married, Job, so you got to work that out. Um, <laughs> that's a word. It's a word for somebody. Verse 10. But Job replied, you talk like a foolish woman. You better call her out, Job. That's what I'm talking about. I was like yelling at the scriptures when I was reading it. Should we accept only good things that come from the hand of God and never anything bad? So in all of this, Job said nothing wrong. You mean to tell me that Job still had a good attitude in the middle of having boils all over his body? In the middle of losing his entire family and all of his friends? He's lost his health and he's lost his family. He's lost everything, and his, his, his posture is still, should we only accept good things from the hand of God and nothing bad? 
that really ministered to me because it made me wonder, what is our posture while we are in the waiting room waiting to get seen by the Lord, waiting for our time, waiting for our season, waiting for God to do something great in our life? What is your posture? What is your attitude? Do you have an attitude like his wife? Curse God and die. Or are you like, no, bad stuff is going to happen, but you know what? God is going to use the bad stuff to make me better. He's going to use it to make me stronger. And I've learned that just because I love Jesus, just because I come to church on Sunday, just because I serve him with my whole heart, does not mean that I'm going to be exempt from tests and trials. We're all not exempt for tests and trials. If anything, the enemy is roaring the earth looking for somebody to devour, especially somebody that is blameless and loves God. Why are you so surprised at the tests and trials? But what I love about this, if you could keep reading, is that you will find that everything that Job lost, it was restored. Every single thing that Job lost was restored. He had a good attitude in the midst of probably one of the hardest seasons of his life. But everything was restored. And I believe that in the name of Jesus, everything you've ever lost will be restored. Every test, every trial, everything that you've ever gone through, it will be restored in Jesus' name. But will you have a good attitude along the process? Job didn't like what was happening in his life, and I don't know what's going on in your life. You might not like it either, but what is your posture towards it? Are you like Roman, who's got the nebulizer, who's fighting? You should see, he was fighting me. But I said, I, like a good, I can't, I can't pull the nebulizer off of you because you're still going to have the same problem. I need you to go through this test because it's going to burn out some stuff that's in you that's not like God. Yes, I know you don't get it. Yes, you don't understand. And Roman didn't understand. He didn't even understand the verbiage from the great physician or the doctor who was there, for example, purposes. He didn't understand. But he knew that, that his mama had a plan and, for his healing and for his health. But will you trust God when the pressure gets put on in your life? What are you running to when the pressure gets put on in your life? Are you running to things of this world to fill your voids? Do you stop your obedience to God when it gets hard? When you don't feel like it? You can't commit to church. You can't commit to serving. You can't commit to a job. You can't commit to a person. You can't commit to anything. It's 2019. Are you going to waste more years of your life not committing to anything? Will you decide today that you are going to be all in, that you're going to serve God with your whole heart? Yes, it's going to be hard. Yes, you're going to go through things. Look at Job's life. But I'm telling you, it's making you stronger. It's making you better. Like, this is a volunteer position for me. <laughs> this is volunteer. I don't get paid for this. <laughs> but the Lord told me to do it. So I'll do what I do as on to the Father for the rest of my life. Because if he tells me to do something, I'm going to do it. Because it's about him and it's not, it's not me and it's not about me. And it's not about you either. I remember when I was in the car a couple months ago, I was riding with picking up Logan and Taylor from their homeschool hybrid program. And Roman, not Roman, Logan, your kids' names just sound the same. Just, I just say number one, two, and three, it's fine. Logan and Taylor were in the car, and I looked over at, and Rome, Logan looked over at Taylor and said, do you know how you get saved? And Taylor said, how? <laughs> so strong. She said, how? <laughs> and Logan said, you just have to accept Jesus into your heart and just believe that he died for you. That's it. You just accept with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus died for you. It's your heart, Taylor. It's about your heart. And Taylor said, my friends are in my heart. <laughs> and Logan said, your friends can't do anything for your heart. Mommy can't do anything for your heart. Daddy can't do anything for your heart. He said, it is only Jesus that can change your heart, Taylor. And I came to tell you the same thing this morning. It is only Jesus that can change your heart. You can run and try to get your voids filled by every other area. You can run from obedience. You can do what you want to do. You can do your thing. But I want you to know that the drugs, the alcohol, the sex outside of marriage will never fill the voids in your heart. The anger, 
the frustration, the things that you're going through. These are all temporary things. And sometimes when we go through hard times, we begin to cling to all these things to look for value and for work and for affirmation. And, and it could be online spending. It could be just running into bad relationships. But God is saying, are you finally going to lay all that stuff down? I know you had a new year, new you, but you've turned up in 2019 and found out 2018 you was still in you. You don't change because a year changed. You changed because you renewed your mind with this word of God and you sat before the Father and he gave you a new perspective on your life and he showed you that you had worth and he showed you that you had value. You might feel weary and, and just down and, and frustrated and I want you to know that I understand. I've been in seasons like that in my own life where I just feel like I keep hitting a wall. Like, God, when am I going to get a break? It just seems like it's one thing after the next. It reminds me of a story I share often in 2011 when we had a miscarriage and then three people close to me passed away and it just seemed like, I felt kind of like Job for just a, a moment where I just felt like bad things keep happening. I'm newly married. God, why am I going through this? But he was allowing those things like that nebulizer to put pressure on me, to birth something in me to show me that I still must keep standing in the midst of the tests and trials that come my way. And it's, it, I believe it's always for somebody else. It's always to show you that, you know what? I went through that too, and I made it out, and I'm okay. I'd like everybody to stand up. I sense that a lot of people are trying to fill their voids with everything else but God in this room. You've hit rock bottom. You've tried everything, the drugs, the alcohol, the sex. You still feel numb. You still don't feel good about yourself. You've tried the lying, all those things. but I believe there's a breakthrough at this altar today for people that have been trying to fill their voids with everything else but God. If that is you, come down here. If that is you, if you're finding that you're just, maybe you're running to food, maybe you're running to alcohol, maybe you're running to social media, maybe you're running to things of this world to find some type of value, some type of worth, I want you to come down here so I can pray for you. And I did this in first service and I sense it again. If you just feel weary, maybe just kind of feel beat up, you just need some hope and some encouragement, I wanna pray for you too. If you feel like I've just been weary, I've just been down, I'm doing the right thing, I'm trying to do what I know to do, but I feel like Job, I just keep getting hit over and over again, then I wanna pray for you specifically. If that is you, come down here as well. I believe that there's breakthrough at the altar. Don't get weary in well-doing. For due season, you will reap if you don't faint, if you don't give up. We worship you, we worship you, we worship you. Let's just worship him. God, we worship you, we worship you. God, you are holy, holy, holy. God, you are holy, holy, holy. God, we pour our care onto you right now, God. You are holy, holy, holy. You are holy, holy, holy. You are holy, holy, holy. Jesus, you are holy. 
holy, holy, holy. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare right now that you are breaking idolatry at this altar. No more will they go back to the sin that they once loved. No more will they go back to what used to, they used to find value and worth in. Instead, God, they will run to your feet every single time. We break the spirit of lust in this room in the name of Jesus. We break fear. We break doubt. We break worry. I declare that when that test comes back around, that they will decide to trust you. You said no temptation has overtaken us and you have given us a way out. So I declare that you are giving these people at this altar a way out, God, that they will not run back to what they once loved. Lord, I just see a pouring out of your spirit right now. I see you changing hearts right now, Lord. I see you changing willing, surrendered hearts right now. I pray for anybody who just feels weary. I pray that you give them the strength right now to keep going. Give them hope again, Lord. Give them joy. The joy that you give them, no man can take it from them. I pray that you give them supernatural strength right now. We bind depression in the name of Jesus. I thank you for giving them hope right now by your spirit. I pray that they'll leave this room and they will never be the same again. You've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. You're to leave this room right now and you were to get in a car accident and die, you would say, I do not know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing. I need you to raise your hand immediately. If you can lower your hands. If you've given your life to God, but you find that you keep straying from him over and over again and you're just... You're just having a hard time getting back on track. I need you to lift up your hands right now if you want change. If you finally want to commit to God and you feel like he's leading you to join the gathering oasis, I need you to put your hands up. You can put your hand down. I'm going to pray out over you guys. But if you lifted your hand for anything, I want you to do something different in 2019. I want you to start committing. Let your yay be yay and your no be no. So if you said yes to any of those things, I want you to go over here to the exit sign. Justin is over here. He's got his hand raised. He's gonna take you to the back. He's gonna show you about growth track. He's gonna show you about prayer. He's gonna walk all that stuff through with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray over this service. I pray over everybody that's here. I thank you, God, with long life, you'll satisfy them and show them your salvation and your goodness. I feel really strong in my spirit that somebody has just been contemplating suicide. Not anymore in the name of Jesus. We bind that spirit of suicide that's over you. We bind those thoughts that keep telling you that you don't have purpose and you don't have worth and it's better off if you're not here. Satan, we tell you to go and you get off of them. Let me show, I want you to look at me. I'm going to tell you what I saw in the spirit. I saw the enemy with his hands holding you like this. And the enemy's back here and he's holding on to you, but I saw him just flee. You don't open up that door to him anymore in the name of Jesus. He was holding on to your mind, but not anymore. He's gone. 
You will live and not die, and you will proclaim the works of the Lord. We're going to continue to worship. We're going to worship also with our giving. But if you raise your hand for any of those things, as you walk back to your seat, or if you're in the audience, I want you to go meet Justin over here so we can give you the next steps of what's going on. Don't you guys just love God's presence? Isn't he good? He's good and he's faithful. And no matter what you've done or where you've gone, he's still calling you back to him. Hallelujah.